You know, there hasn't really been a killer app toy this year for Christmas, has there? Uh, nothing that's really been like in the must-have department that people are fighting over in stores like the good old days. Do I attribute this to the assassination of Toys R Us? Absolutely. But, uh, you know, it's not an entirely hopeless year, even though we haven't really gotten, like, any new bombshells that have come out, and even though some of the toys that did come out are sadly no longer with us, things like, uh, Battle Claw, Turning Mech Card, Screechers Wild, all of those, there are still a number of notable things that might be a good idea for Christmas. So if you're, uh, shopping for yourself, shopping for somebody else, shopping for somebody you love, this is Kodok's Last Minute Christmas Guide. So of course every store has their picks for uh, what the best toys that they have are. This is the Target catalog here from about a month ago, but um, you of course have your uh, your standard fare. You have your Lego is always a champion, and of course you have the Barbie Dream House, the Hot Wheels Garage, you of course have Star Wars and Transformers, all five of the major toy lines that I identified in my uh, Golden Toys video are still all available, although Star Wars, because they've been putting out a movie every year, has gotten a bit haggard. Solo was not quite the movie that I think a lot of people were hoping for, and I think a lot of people have just started to develop brand fatigue. The original trilogy was three years apart for a reason, but uh, the other big standby is, as always, video games. And uh, let's talk about video games a bit more. We, of course, have uh, the major consoles, your Xbox, the PlayStation 4, and the Nintendo Switch, and the Nintendo Switch is widely seen as the biggest up-and-comer. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate was released in December for a reason, and it has actually gotten a bunch of interesting free titles as well. For example, they have recently added Warframe for their free-to-start category, and uh, Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee I've actually been hearing a lot of good things about. I don't have a Switch, so <laughs> I can't really talk about it, but... Um, when I look at it, it does have a lot of things that people have been wanting from Pokemon games for a long time. You have your favorite Pokemon which can follow you around, and you can actually see the Pokemon in the grass maneuvering around, and those are things that people have been asking for for years. It contains, like, absolutely zero challenge, but if your idea of a fun Pokemon game is a romp through a Pokemon world, catching them all and seeing the sights, then I have heard some good things about it. Of course, in the slightly cheaper category, we have the NES Classic and the SNES Classic, which uh, are still all very good. The SNES Classic is uh, probably the better deal there. You get two controllers with longer cables, and you get a lot of what are considered to be some of the greatest games ever made. Games like Earthbound and Super Metroid and Link to the Past. Those are among some of my favorite games as well, so the SNES Classic is definitely a good deal. However... The PlayStation Classic has not quite gotten the same reputation. After Nintendo knocked it out of the park two years in a row and have finally started producing enough stock, Sony was trying to get on that with the PlayStation Classic, which... Uh, it doesn't really have the best game selection. I mean, it has some staples like Metal Gear Solid and Final Fantasy VII, but a lot of the games in there have actually gotten remakes, and that's a bit of a shame because they also included the original Wild Arms as opposed to the far superior Wild Arms 2, which... It's another personal favorite game of mine. I think 3 is the best, but two's, two's definitely up there. Um, but it has been plagued with some problems. There have been a lot of games that have been playing in PAL format, but in recent days, the PlayStation Classic has actually gone from garbage to salvageable because it turns out that it uses open source software. This gives it a tremendously huge back door that it is capable to get into and adjust the settings. If you plug in a certain keyboard, or I've heard if you hit select triangle on one of the controllers on the start menu, you can get into the debug menu and switch all of those games that are playing at PAL format back over to run at 60 frames per second NTSC. Although that kind of speaks volumes about the quality of their production when the whole thing was just a few clicks away from running every game at 60 frames per second and they couldn't even be bothered to do that much. Also, did you know that there's actually a Sega Genesis classic as well? It's a bit different. It's a bit junkier and cheaper. It's the sort of thing you'd find in Family Dollar instead of Best Buy. But these sorts of things are what Sega has been releasing for a while. And this one actually has a working cartridge port. So you can actually find some of your old Sega Genesis games or find them out in the wild and plug them into this new console to play them. And that 
really gives it a lot of edge over some of the things like the NES Classic and the PlayStation Classic. Sega has been all about brand proliferation lately, and it's actually paid off for them in spades. Uh, we'll have to see how long that lasts. Next up, let's talk about Paw Patrol. Last year, Paw Patrol didn't really impress anybody by putting out an entire line of water-themed toys that could not actually go into water. So if a lot of people have cold feet about Paw Patrol this year, rest assured that Paw Patrol Ultimate Rescue is a huge improvement over the previous line. Literally, it, could t it takes a lot of the things that I enjoyed from Mission Paw and integrates it into the core line. The idea of Ultimate Rescue is that now all of the pups have a large vehicle that they can work with. They are the, still the standard price, but they actually have like big super heavy vehicles like Sky gets a giant Chinook helicopter. And of course there is the huge Marshall fire truck. And this is combined with what were previously the Mission Paw micro vehicles, which could actually attach onto these big vehicles with hard points to create this giant awesome gestalt. I think it is a huge step in the right direction. Also popular this year is LOL Surprise. This was one of the toys that was discovered at Toys R Us because Toys R Us was where toys got discovered and we don't really have that opportunity anymore, but that's still been fairly popular. They've been playing around with a variety of price points. They now have one that's sort of a large pill shaped one that's $15 and comes with some more features. It's sort of like a little elevator with, I think it's supposed to be like a little spy inside. Although seeing less success have been the versions that people have been trying to make for toys. Things like MGA's own Ready to Robot and Treasure X, which are trying to be the sort of $10 unboxing experience that LOL Surprise is, but it doesn't seem to have met with the same success, at least not so far. Another good standard is, of course, Lego. Lego is the biggest toy in the world, and that is because it is a toy with infinite potential. They put out a Batmobile this year, but a lot of the things that uh, we're really looking forward to are things that are going to be hitting on January 1st, things like Ninjago Legacy. So if you have somebody who wants to get some Legos, unless they've like given you a specific set that they want you to buy, Get them a gift card and have them wait till January 1st for a lot of the new LEGO sets to drop. They always drop a ton of great stuff on January 1st, specifically to help refill the shelves after the holidays have drained them all. So it might be worth waiting that extra week to get access to those new sets. Of course, Mattel has still been putting out Mega Constructs. The Mega Constructs Pokemon line has still been going strong. They now have the gigantic Pikachu. We also have Dragonite and Mewtwo. There is the, the sets of the Johto starters. They've started also putting out the Alola starters and hopefully we'll be moving into Generation 3 territory pretty soon, although I still can't find that Larvitar. And let's uh, wrap it up with a few more honorable mentions. Mattel's Jurassic Park line, from what I've heard, is the best Jurassic Park line we have gotten in years. And this includes the Imaginex Tyrannosaurus Rex, which comes with everybody's star attraction, Chris Pratt. I mean, who needs a dinosaur when you get Chris Pratt, right? Um, but they're also, their, their stuff aimed at older kids has also proven to be very popular as well. Um, Beyblade, uh, Beyblade Burst has gotten a new line. I think it's called the Shock Launch. It comes with a green launcher and that's the newest line to come out. They have also put out the classic versions. This actually kind of surprised me is uh, they actually had Beyblades based on the four core Beyblades from the original Beyblade series as burst tops. I knew these existed in Japan. I actually did not expect them to come to the United States. So that was actually a bit of a pleasant surprise. We also have Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, a divisive series to be certain, but I think it's pretty cool. And they have put out a new sewer layer playset. It is yet another of these sewer layer playsets that winds up bigger than the box when it's fully put together. Trust me when I say any toy that winds up bigger than the box it comes in is always a worthwhile purchase to me. Things like a lot of the large Lego sets and like I said, the sewer layer playset, it is, it is... It's bigger than, uh, than I can show you on the screen. It is definitely a marvel to behold. But yeah, that's a, a basic look at some of the Christmas goods I have. If, if you've heard about a product and you uh, want to know my opinion of it, be sure to uh, feel free to let me know in the comment below. Oh, one last thing. Before we go, there is one more thing I would like you guys to keep in mind this Christmas, and that is giving back to the people who help make the holiday possible. This is the time of year where people working for the postal and delivery services are having their busiest and coldest times. Cases of frostbite and hypothermia can get pretty crazy for those who are unprepared or caught off guard. So what I like to do is whenever I have the chance, I like to stick a set of hot hands 
in my mailbox with a note attached to it to let them know that it is for my post postal worker. I have gotten so much appreciation from them and it's it's just a nice thing to do. Even if you have like the trustiest and most well bundled uh, postman out there, it lets them know that they are appreciated and that is such an important thing to have during the holiday season. So um, if you would like to hashtag hot hands for the postman this year, that is just generally a nice thing to do. So until next time, we will be back on Christmas to have maybe a bit of fun. I don't know what kind of fun we're going to be having, but it's definitely going to be Christmassy fun. So until next time, this is Kodak signing off.